So in a pleasant surprise, Apple beat their own timeline that they gave to the public and released iOS 18.4 before April started. Granted, we're only a day away from it. However, we were thinking this was going to be closer to April 7th than actually the 1st of April. Nonetheless, iOS 18.4 is available to the public. Make sure you guys go check it out and download it if you've been waiting on this. We did get quite a few new features, even though one of the main ones we were promised is still not here, and that is for a smarter Siri, which now is kind of on hold indefinitely until we hear back from Apple, but it could be up to a year away still. Having said that, if you have been like us and really curious what is in these new releases officially from Apple, you'll be happy to know that in their release notes this time, they actually give a nice detailed breakdown. We're going to go ahead and go over these, talk about how, build the build, how big the build number is, I should say, and let's go ahead and take a quick look. If you missed our other videos on these, we went more in depth in those prior builds, but for now, let's take a look at this and go from there. Let us know in the comments down below exactly how you feel about where iOS 18.4 is and its future trajectory. Let's go. So we're gonna do this video a little different since we already do have 18.4 on our 16 Pro Max. I wanna show you the breakdown on our 16 Pro of all the features since Apple actually did give us a breakdown for everything new, which is a nice pleasant surprise. But if you have not been coming from one of the betas, this is the official release and it's coming in on our iPhone 16 at 3.76 gigabytes. And what's interesting about this is that's about half the size of what the RC was that we received on our 16 Pro Max. They all came in a little over seven gigs last week. Now, having said that, what is super nice about this that I was just telling you about, if you hit learn more, we have a full breakdown of all of the new features and we're gonna go through most of these right here. But if you're curious to know actually what Apple really unveiled and updated in this version, you can finally see that in these about this update notes. So first things first, you can see it says Apple Intelligence, which is applicable on all iPhone 16 models, 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. We already know about priority notifications. They appear at the top of your notifications, highlighting important notifications, yada, yada, yada. We don't have an exact way to show you that right now. We don't have any priority notifications, but if you do, it does come right above any other outstanding notifications you do have. The next item on this list is Sketch in Image Playground, which is kind of nice if you're a fan and actually still using this. Let's just go ahead and create something here really quick. And when you do this, you will now have the ability to go with pressing the plus sign here and using that sketch style, which is exactly what you see here being utilized. Prior to this release, we only had illustration that you can see here finalizing and then also animation. This is taking a lot longer than it normally does, but if we go back to animation here, you will see that version as well. But again, as you can tell, what's interesting, it automatically pulled in a picture, not any of those three options we originally did. So even though this is one of Apple's first AI features or Apple intelligent features, not really coming to grips with great usability yet, still kind of hit and miss there. We didn't want to use, you know, somebody's face so we'll go ahead and remove that. And then you can see it regenerate in whatever style you have. Unfortunately for this version, it is asking for a person and that's why it actually added that. The next one here is Apple Intelligence features support for eight additional languages. And then we obviously did get the Apple Vision Pro app. So if you search down here for vision, you will now oops, see that we have a brand new Apple Vision Pro app right here. This kind of highlights some of the experiences going on, some games, telling you about spatial gallery, movies, and things of that nature, as well as giving you details on your Vision Pro as well. That's a kind of nice little tweak here that they added, if that is something you have. I know a lot of people don't have an Apple Vision Pro simply because, well, it's more so of a paperweight at this point for a lot of people and not very useful for everyday use cases. In Apple News Plus, there are recipes for some of the world's best recipe publishers out there, recipe catalogs, cooking modes, and a new food selection uh, area in here. And then in photos, there's new filters to show or hide items that are not contained in an album or synced from a Mac or PC in the library view in photos. You can now also reorder 
items in the media types and utilities collection. There's more consistent filtering options in all collections. Options to sort albums by date modified in photos, ability to disable recently viewed or recently shared, and hidden photos are no longer included for import to Mac or PC if use face ID is enabled. So very nice features. We know the photo app has got a lot of backlash. Some people love it, some people hate it, but at least they're tweaking it, making it more usable. What we are getting in this build also are those eight new emojis that we've talked about before. Let me go ahead and show you what those are. They are nothing really crazy, quite honestly, but they do look good if that's your thing. You can see right here what they look like. And again, you do have that face with baggy eyes, the harp, a root vegetable, leafless tree, splatter, and that shovel. So if you're a big emoji fan and you use any of these, I know we can use the face with baggy eyes quite a bit. Those are now available for everyone as well. Safari recent search suggestions help you quickly get back to previous search topics when starting a new query. I don't use Safari that much, but this could be beneficial for people who do. I usually use Chrome here. You have a setup assistant that streamlines steps parents need to take to create a child account. Screen time app. This is a good one that a lot of people were complaining about. Screen time app limit will now persist even if your child was smart enough basically to uninstall and reinstall the app to try to recalculate that timer and reset it. Now it will continue even after you do uninstall and reinstall the app. The app store does include summaries for reviews now. So if you go in the app store and say you want to look at Clash of Clans, there is going to be now a new AI summary if that's something you're interested in as well. Then you also do have the ability to now pause and resume an app download. That was nice. That was here prior and kind of disappeared after a while. We do have new widgets for podcasts, including followed shows widget, and then also latest episodes saved and downloads. So for the podcast widget, if you are interested in that, you can simply go to edit, add widget, and search in widgets for podcasts. And you can see you have your up next library, shows, those are all here. If you so choose to utilize something like that, that is now available for you. Aside from that, you do have ambient music offers the ability to instantly play music from Control Center, giving access to a set of hand curated playlists that offer tracks for daily life. This is something we did actually talk about also in a prior video. So if you pull down, oops, your control center here and go ahead and long press here, you can actually see we still have one here. Add a control, you can go to ambient music and you can see you have ones for sleep, chill, productivity, and well-being. If you do add one, what is pretty cool about this is you don't necessarily need to use their playlists. You can actually customize it and use your own playlist as you can see here in these drop-down menus. That'll be very useful if you like a specific set of music to play while you are going to sleep. Aside from that, Apple Fitness Plus collections can now be added to the library. This is something we've heard about for a while now too. It is that Matter compatible robot vacuum cleaners. They can now be controlled in the home app as well as be added to scenes and automations and support for 10 new system languages. These are the majority of what you're going to get in this update. We're going to go ahead and do this on our 16 Pro, or excuse me, our 16 right now. And let that download. Aside from that, if you did miss our video in regards to battery life and performance on the actual RC2, it's been very fluid. I'm very, very happy with this build. Battery life has been much better than what we've seen recently and gives us definitely no pause in recommending this to be downloaded and updated. Obviously, your experience, unfortunately, might vary depending on what device you're on, but at least on our 16 Pro Max, we have had no issues at all with this, no springboard reloads, and this truly does feel like a regular release that Apple should have and historically did have up until recently. More exciting though is what could be coming and that is iOS 18.5. Here we are really starting out April tomorrow. I truly believe we could see the first beta for 18.5 as soon as tomorrow now or the 7th when we originally thought we'd be getting 18.4 public release. So 
Keep your eyes open. We'll be doing plenty of videos in regards to iOS 18.5 and what's new with that and to see if Apple can push along Apple intelligence like they promised. But that's it for now. Let us know in the comments down below. Like we said, what do you feel that Apple's trajectory is on for iOS? It leaves a lot to be desired right now. Lots of rumors around iOS 19 in just a couple months time. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.